JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 18th. I am Harlamos Pissoros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the market. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded, uh, continued trading uh, lower yesterday and today in Asia, losing ground against all but one of the other major uh, currencies. It underperformed the most uh, against AUD and in the end cut in that order, while it lost the least versus GBP. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against JPY. Now the weakening of the US dollar and the safe haven yen Combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie, Kiwi and Looney suggests that market uh, sentiment may have stayed relatively supported. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European indices traded mixed, but all three of Wall Street's main indices traded in the green, with the optimism rolling into the Asian session today as well. Of the indices under our radar, only Hong Kong's Hang Seng lost some ground. Now, risk appetite may have been shaken during the European session, perhaps due to fresh headlines surrounding the war between Russia and Ukraine, saying that despite some, uh, some progress um, being made in the last few days in negotiations, the two sides remain far apart. In our view, this suggests that an imminent resolution does not appear very likely at the, moment, at the moment, but the market reaction during the US and Asian sessions suggests uh, that market participants are not as worried as in the previous weeks. Maybe they believe that the conflict is fully priced in, or they are optimistic that some further progress could be made in the next few days. In any case, with the war still raging, we are still reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. Yes, we could see some further advances in equities in the near term, as we noted yesterday, but our overall stance remains neutral for now. And this is because of the latest official headlines pointing to some progress in uh, peace dialogues, but as well as due to the technical pictures of some indices which uh, broke, um, which broke above uh, some key resistance zone. Otherwise, we would have maintained the view that the path of least resistance remains to the downside. Yesterday, we also had a Bank of England decision with the bank lifting its benchmark rate by another 25 basis points as it was widely expected. However, what came as a surprise was the 7 to 1 voting with the descender calling for no increase at all. Remember that the previous gathering officials uh, Officials uh, lifted rates uh, by 25 basis points as well, but the vote was 5 to 4 with the descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. Compared to that, yesterday's decision reveals a more cautious approach by policymakers and raises questions as to whether they will indeed proceed as aggressive as the market has been pricing in heading into this uh, gathering. A small change in the forward guidance added a more credit to that view. Officials said that some further modest uh, tightening may be appropriate, which appears to be, a softer, uh, to be a softer language than the previous is likely to be appropriate. All this explains why the pound fell at the time of the decision. Now, as uh, for today's events, during the Asian session Friday, we had another uh, major central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this was uh, the Bank of Japan. As it was widely expected, officials did not proceed with any bold uh, change, and that's why the yen did not react. Later in the day, Canada's retail sales for January are due to be released. Headline sales are forecast to have rebounded 2.4% month over month after sliding 1.8% in December, but core sales are anticipated to have continued uh, 
sliding, albeit at a slower pace. Specifically, the forecast points to a 2% month-over-month slide after a 2.5% fall the month uh, before. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You, you can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.